Glory. Come on, everybody. Give them praise. Honor your God. Is that it? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Welcome, everyone, to Thursday night Bible study here at Turning Point Fellowship. Everyone on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for uh, tuning in. We uh, appreciate you. Um, please take a seat. We have some announcements, please. All right. We have a very busy month, end of the month, and next month, people. So please take note. This Saturday, uh, there's baptism at Pastor Joe's house. Amen. Saturday, October 28th at 2 p.m. in the city of Anaheim. If you want to be baptized again, rededicate yourself. Um, you want to come out for the fellowship. Uh, there's information right there with the address. We have um, a list with um, things you can provide if you want to come uh, in fellowship with us. So please come out. It's going to be a blast. Amen. All right. We have uh, our Turning Point Fellowship invites you to the Harvest Fest here at our building Tuesday, October 31st at 5.30 p.m. I, I, I really ask you guys and I encourage you to come out and participate. Um, what a blast we had. My wife and I last year, we, we, we got dressed up. We were pumpkins. We de decorated our car. We gave out candy. I mean, the community came out. It was such a blast. I... I, I strongly, I strongly encourage you guys to come out and be a part of it. Be a part of what we're doing in the community with other people. You know, um, let's be the light and the darkness in this world. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. We got November's potluck. November 5th here at Turning Point. It's a Thanksgiving potluck. So come out. We have a list out there um, with turkeys mashed potatoes sign up bring some waters bring some drinks invite a friend invite your family to come and enjoy a day with us amen <laughs> all right we have the men's higher men of a higher standard men's advance 2023 november 17th to the 19th I strongly suggest, men, um, that you get your deposit in. Uh, our last day of taking deposit money for shirts, you can still sign up. You can still come and join us. But to guarantee yourself a shirt is November 3rd. I believe that's next Friday. So put your deposit down. Get a shirt. Be a part of what uh, Turning Point is doing. Men of a higher standard, you get a shirt. And then that's a memory of what happens up on the hill, you know. Um, it's, to me, it changed my life. You know, I got to experience the Lord like never before out of this, this room, out of the rooms of a church, out of um, a, a, a fellowship outside. It was just me and the Lord. It was, it was such an awesome uh, event, and it's changed my life. Amen? All right. Um, I believe we have the men's meeting also. And it's uh, November 4th here at Turning Point at 9 a.m. You'll come up right now. But we, we ask the men to come out. Bring your uh, co-workers, your friends, your cousins. Uh, well, yeah, it's a warm-up. Exactly, Pastor. It's a warm-up for um, the men's meeting. So come out. Come and join us. Also, we have the Women's of Virtue Christmas Luncheon. December 9th at 11 a.m. Men, my, I'm, I'm encouraging you men to pay for your wives. Have your wives come out to this, man. It's going to be a blast. We have special speakers. Please contact uh, Sister Bobby. Uh, I believe it's uh, Margarita and uh, Sandra. And they'll give you all the information you need. So men, pay for your wives. Get her out there. Get her out there with the other women. Amen. And also, uh, we have prayer on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. I strongly suggest that you come out to that, too. What, what an awesome evening it is to come out, do something different, come out and pray in, in, in a corporate um, house of prayer. 
where we all get together, we pray as one in agreement, and, and it, it's, it's a really awesome evening, so come out. I have a, a note right here, excuse me. So um, on November 14th, which is um, I think two, week, two Wednesdays from now, we're going to switch uh, prayer to the 15th. The reason why we're moving prayer to Wednesday the 15th is because we have the worship team for the mountain that's going to come here on Tuesday to practice. So uh, that's the only day it's going to change is the 15th of November, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Amen? All right. Scripture, please. Um, some scripture with you, with you all. It's Romans 8, 38. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening or things to come nor powers. 39? Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the all unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Um, I had this scripture. I was supposed to come up here two weeks ago um, to open. Something happened. I can't remember. But this scripture has been in my heart for the last two weeks. Whatever you're going through, whatever circumstance it may be, whatever financial problem, whatever marital uh, um, company at work, whatever it may be, always when we when we move our eye away from him, it's just like Peter when he got out the boat and walked on water. He walked on water. He walked on water. But what he did is he took his eye off of Christ and he fell down. You know, but who was there? God. You know, um, Paul, he, he went through a lot of trouble on just, it, on just prosecution, phantom, false arrest, shipwreck. He was threatened his life, so much more. But he was reminded how, in the confidence and in the truth of God's love knows no end. So I want you to um, remember that, that God's love is everlasting. It never, it never ends. Regardless of what we've done in our past, regardless of what we do now, tomorrow, the next day, he loves you and has a plan for you. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time right now, Lord God, that we come into your house, Father God, your house of prayer, Lord God. We're here for you, Lord God. We ask you, Father God, to change our hearts, Father God. I ask you, Father God, for, for forgiveness, Lord God, for any sin I might have committed to you or any of my brothers might have committed against you, Father. We just ask you, Father God, to forgive us, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, that our worship be a great worship to you, Father God, a sweet smell to your nostrils, Father God. Lord God, I also ask you, Father God, to change our hearts, Father God. Remove the stony hearts that we have, Father God, and place a heart of flesh, Lord God, a heart that loves you, Father God, the holiness, Father God, of your love, Lord God. So right now, Lord God, I just ask that the worship team play a song like never before, Lord, that our worship be for you and only you, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's go before his throne. Let's enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Give him glory. Give him glory. Let's be bold before him. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, we worship you. Nothing can separate us from your love. I want to be in your presence. 
Fill every part of our prayer. 
Defender of my 
myself away. I give myself away. So you can you give myself give myself away. We surrender all. Not my 
wonderful you are, Lord. We're here to worship you. We're here to sing unto you, Lord God. We're here to bow our lives before you, our spirit, soul, and our body, Lord. We surrender this day, this day of foolishness, this day of speaking foolishly, Lord, of thinking foolishly, Lord. If we have sinned in front of you, Lord God, we ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins, Lord. And as we come before you, Lord God, we surrender, we bow before you. We say that you are our king. You're the king of kings and you are the Lord of your name is Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the son of the living God. You are. Father, and I thank you for the Holy Spirit, the spirit that lives within every believer here, that we hear your voice, Lord God. I thank you. What an honor it is that we can hear your voice. And what an honor it is when we obey. What a blessing it is to obey God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our hearts, our lives, our children, our grandchildren. Thank you for Turning Point Fellowship. I thank you for everyone on Facebook, on YouTube, Lord God. I pray as they enter into worship, Lord God, hear us too, Father. Let it be just sufficient, Lord God. Let it be in our hearts and from our hearts, God. Let it be from our hearts, Lord. We surrender. As the word is declared, presented before us, Lord, let our ears be open to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let our hearts be open to the salvation of Jesus Christ. That we would gain the wisdom, the understanding, the justice of your word, Lord. We want to live like you, Father. We want to be examples to our families, to our friends, to our wives, to our husbands, to our co-workers, Lord. Let us be examples. Teach us. Teach us to walk, Father, as you have showed us, have you instructed us, Lord. I thank you and I bless you, Father, for those that are on their way. I say no accidents, Father, no breakdowns, Father. No flat tires, not even a ticket, Lord. Just a safe passage to this place and from this place. I pray right now, Lord. Touch us, Lord. We want to change our hearts. We want to change our lives, Lord. We want to. And we surrender right now, Lord. Let's just let it go. Just let it go. Whatever it may be, just let it go. Any sin, any hardship, any unforgiveness, any bitter, bitterness, any pain, any doubt or disbelief, just release that right now. You're in the presence of a king. You're in the presence of the most, ho most high, the holy one. Thank you, Father, that we're in your presence. And we know that in your presence there's power. A power to change our minds, Father. We've come so many steps, Lord. There's so much more to do. So many more steps, Father. Teach us. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen our faith. Strengthen our minds, our hearts, Lord. That we could declare that we know that it's not by might, Father. No by, no by, I forget it, Lord. But not by strength, not by strength, and nor by might, Father, but by the strength of God. I'll say it like that. Excuse me. Thank you, Father. By your strength, Lord God, that we live, we have our breath, and we have our being, Lord. I pray right now in Jesus' name that we receive what we came for. What's in our hearts, what's in our minds, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Touch us. Change our lives, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Let's go ahead and make your ways back to your seats, man. Praise the Lord, amen. Thank you, Father. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by His Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If you guys need an envelope, these handsome married men will get you an envelope. If you raise your hands, raise them up high. Raise them up high, and they'll get you one. If you didn't come with any cash or you didn't come with any uh, checks, you can come and give through that phone number there. Where's my children at? 714. All right, hold on, hold on, kids, hold on. Let's do this all together, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. Seven, one, four, four, seven, 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 three, six. You can hit that or you can scan it and you can hit that QR uh the QR code right there, and you can give through that. Don't forget to give. When you're in the house of God, it's always a blessing to give. And I want to read this scripture to you guys, to one of the most uh, uh, powerful scriptures that we can read, that we can learn from God himself, from our Father. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? He's a giver. Our father's a giver. So he gave his best, his son. Now it's our turn to give unto the Lord and give our best. Amen? Your best, your best may be $2. It may be $5. I don't know your situation. But sometimes it may be $100. It may be the tithe. It may be a little bit more than the tithe. Amen? You know in your hearts what you're to give to the Lord. So I just want to encourage you. Just like our father, he gave his son. What will we give? What will we give in exchange of that? So give with a grateful heart and a thankful heart in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. 
stretch your hands forth in agreement in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this tithe and this offering. We thank you for every provision, Lord God, that you have applied, Father, into our lives. Lord. Father, I thank you for the wages, Father. I thank you, Father, for the positions you've given them, Lord. Thank you for the joy, the love, the happiness in their hearts. I thank you for the forgiveness, Lord God. All these beautiful gifts you give unto your people, Lord. That today, Father, when they leave this place, they'll leave differently. And we just thank you that the windows of heaven are opened up to pour out a blessing upon us, Lord. Greater than us, Father, upon our children and our grandchildren, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the divine protection over our children, our grandchildren, over our husbands and our wives, over our friends, our families, our household, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we lack in no good thing, that we have more than enough, Lord. I thank you for the tithers and the givers, Lord. I thank you for those that have a heart, that have a heart to give, Lord. That when you speak to them, Father, they'll say, I must give unto the house of God because he loves me and I love him. It's the only reason we give is because we love him. So we thank you and we bless you for this right now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if our, uh, our youth people here. No? Okay. So our youth will be staying in. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, but we're going to let our children go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's give them a good round of applause. In Jesus' name, are you teaching? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, the youth is going out. They didn't let me know that. All right, praise God. Well, we're going to go ahead and release our worship team. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I apologize for that, guys. Amen. They didn't tell me that uh, Mr. Diego was teaching today. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, put your Bibles in your right hand. Uh, I'm going to do something different here. We're going to do something more different again, all right, guys, if you guys want to. We're going to move. This team is going to move to the left, and these people are going to move to the right. We're going to move in the center. Thank you. Praise God. You've got change today. Today, change. Change came to you. Amen? There you go. Thank you, Lord. Came right at the right time. Teresa is going to move here to your, to your right. Teresa and the family is going to move over here to the right. You guys made something different today, something changed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. I like, I like when God surprises us like that. Amen. Change came. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. So if you have your Bibles, put your Bibles in your, in your right hand. Hallelujah. And say it like you mean it. Yeah, we're all moving over to the right right there. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. My body, I'm bold, I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible. Ever living seed of the, seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's Bibles behind you guys there on your uh, pews there. This is a Bible study, and we should carry our Bible even if we read it. At least bring your Bible. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, yes, uh, yesterday I, I received a, a telephone call from a young lady from our church. Uh, she's off in college right now, but she had like five, six questions about what we're studying. Isn't that beautiful? The people are looking into the scriptures and they say, I have I have answer. I mean, questions 
on certain things that are being said. And they're college people. You know, we're going to have a college uh, class here coming up very, very, very soon. So uh, we want you guys to invite your friends and let them know that, you know, we're going to be having a college class. And they're going to be at your level and things like that may be a little higher than ours or, you know, we don't know. We're just going to see what happens. Amen. Oh, you know, I just want to inter- uh, encourage, encourage you men right now that, uh, men, we're, we're going to the mountain. Let me say it again. Men, we're going to the mountain. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you guys to come. You guys that uh, haven't signed up, you guys that haven't put a deposit on and things like that, uh, uh, some things we got to sacrifice, you know. I don't know if you guys know that, you know, I, I'm not bragging or boasting, but for 29 years I've sacrificed my life. I've sacrificed my children. I've sacrificed my, my wife, my marriage, you know, and I'm not trying to feel sorry for myself. I just want you guys to know what it costs to be a Christian, to be a Christian. Amen. Uh, I sent a little uh, video thing out today, a Spanish-speaking little girl, probably about 10 years old, and she's preaching the gospel of Christ. Amen. And and she's talking about that stuff, what it takes to be a Christian. People say they're Christians, she's saying, you know, but they don't act like Christians. They don't talk like Christians, you know. They don't behave like Christians. She says, you know, they don't uh, back up the church, you know, but they're, they say they're Christians. I say, whoo, and she's a little thing. Right, if you guys, well, you saw it, huh, man? Yeah, fire, fireball, you know, and uh, very true. And us as men, I'm looking at all the men that we're leaders. Thank you, brother. Amen. There's one leader. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but, you know, we're leaders. We're leaders of our home. You know, and if, and if we're not leading our women by our wives, I should say, excuse me, our wives uh, by, by example, what's going on? And, you know, that's why, uh, I'm going to be honest, why women have taken over the houses, it wasn't that way from the beginning. It, it's not meant to be that way. It is not. You're to work together and everything. But when it comes to a, a, a decision, I'm talking about a big, heavy decision, the, the man should have a big saying in it, a big saying. When we were buying uh, insurance for my house, an uh, 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 insurance guy came in the house, and, uh, you know, he, he hears how my wife speaks. She speaks professional. Very eloquent, you know. This is what you get right here, my brother and sister. Say amen. You know, and uh, so he, he's listening, and then his, his uh, uh, focus went on her. His uh, attention went on her. And he's watching, and he's listening, and his questions are now going to her. Her speaking, his speaking is going towards her. I'm sitting on the side, and like, you're on the sideline right now, my brother. I'm like, I'm going to be honest. I, did, I said this, orally. You, you want to do that? I said, okay, you want to disrespect me right here? I'm saying this in my head. And at the end, you know, he's putting out the numbers and everything and telling us, you know, what's going to be covered and all that. And I said, we're good. Don't worry about it. He said, what's that? I said, we're done. I said, you get your stuff and you go ahead and just leave my house. He said, I thought we were talking about shirts. I said, you did. And that's it. We're done. I said, you're not going to disrespect me in front of my wife. And my wife goes, he makes the decisions. I'll tell him what to say or tell him, you know, what I'm expecting, what I'm believing, you know. But he'll make the final decision on that. And he says, I apologize. I said, I I received that. But he walked out, you know, and that was it. We as men have to learn how to stand up for who we are. I'm not saying machoism. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying being a supervisor or being the stronger guy, because it ain't because you have muscles and big shoulders and big chest. It ain't because of that, because you have a big heart. Amen. And the strongest person in in the world was, or the most, yeah, the strongest person was a person of humility. That was Jesus Christ. He's the greatest man that ever lived on this earth. And he was the greatest and the most uh, humble 
that you'll ever have besides Moses. He said it out of his own mouth. Moses is one of the most humblest men, if not the most humblest men on the earth beside himself. <clears throat> and this is how we have to be. So I, I just want to encourage you men, because I know you guys all have $200. I know that. Don't tell me, oh, no, I don't. No, you, you worked all year long, and both of you worked or something like that? You got to have money stashed in your little stash, right? All of us, I know, oh, I know that all of us, us men, uh, I got it, man. I, I know that I was taught to always have money stashed out for emergency. We were talking about it, Bobby, the other day, right? That, you know, you got to have three, four, five hundred bucks, a thousand, whatever you can put, you know, in your, in your suit, you know, a little box in your garage somewhere or in your closet. You know, you got to have money. You, 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 you need, a, uh, you need a, a battery. You should have money for a battery. You need a tire. You need your tire fixed. You shouldn't have to go borrow 40 bucks. Or your credit card. You shouldn't have to go to that. You know, sometimes you have to, but you shouldn't. You should have cash. If you learn how to uh, move your, your money, you know, 20 bucks every check, just put it in there. 25 bucks every check. I'm just putting it in there, leaving it in an envelope. By the end of the month, you have $100. By next month, you have $200. That's just emergency money. That's not money to go spend. You know, we're hungry. We're going to go get some pizzas. Oh, yeah, we have money. No. It's for things that are needed in the house. You never know. You know, and you have that. We, we should all have that. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. You know, uh, and if your man don't do it, ladies, then you do it. Put it to the side. Don't tell him because he's going to take it from you. <laughs> you know, I, I worked for my uncle. He was a plumber. And I was cleaning his, his, his uh, van one day because that's what you do on slow days. You know, you clean the van, you organize it and everything. And I found a big old sock. He had a roll like that. I'm like, ooh. I go, what's this? He goes, put that back. No one told you to touch that. He goes, put it back. I said, what's that for? He says, for emergencies. He says, because I, if I tell my wife that I have $1,200, guess how much she needs? $1,200. If I told her I have $600, guess what she needs? $600. Amen? So we have to be wise. But men, uh, I know that you have $200. Because we, we start in November. So you got 13 months or 12 months, I would say, to save money. That's twenty dollars a, a month. You can just put it in the in the box, you know, or in the bucket. You can put twenty bucks. At the end of the at the end of the year, you're gonna have a little more than two hundred dollars. I'm giving that to another brother that, you know, doesn't have that money. That's probably just barely making it. You know, I'll go ahead and do that. You know, but if you begin to just give that to other people, God's gonna bless you. God's gonna bless you. I always pay for two, three men, always. Well, I, don't, I don't know if it's you guys or people from the outside, because I know we invite people from the outside, and some of them don't have money. What I want from those men, I said, give me 25 bucks, give me 50 bucks at least. That way you didn't come for free and you just take it for granted, because you invest in your life. This is an investment. It's not just we're going camping and this and that, we're going to go fry some fish and all that kind of stuff. No. You're investing in your life. You're investing in your, yourself, amen, your family. You're investing in your, your husband, your, I mean, your wife and your children. You're investing into yourself for they can be better people. We get better. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been, I sat under a pastor that did it for me be, way before me, and then they gave me the baton, what, about four years ago, I think it was, huh? Four, four or five years ago, they gave me the baton to... Uh, to be the head of this ministry here. And one day I'm going to give that ministry to somebody. You know, that's what I want. I don't want to, not that I don't want it, but, you know, it's time for the men to step up and take their place in ministry. Amen. Women do more ministry than men. In most churches across America, it shouldn't be like that. Men, if we're going to be the leaders, then we should be, Ushers, amen. We, we should be armor bearers. We should be uh, teachers. We should be youth ministers. You know, uh, este, uh, Diego, he's, he's not officially 
part of our church. But he works in our church. And there's men in our church that are officially part of Turning Point Fellowship that don't labor in this church. They don't labor with this. And this is what Paul was talking about. That Timothy's a, a co-laborer with me. He's a minister with me. And that's what we're to do. We're to be working with each other. You, you know what I mean? Like when we're doing the lawn, you know, if you guys don't work here, you know, I can go help do the lawn. I can rake. I can sweep. Okay. Well, I can. Amen. I can. Angel. Pastor Angel can. Amen. So uh, we could do that. You know, whatever it takes to break up, tear down, I can do that. I can tear some chairs down. I can, you know, pick up some chairs, excuse me, and, and tables. You know, we can do that. You know, when I see ladies do that, I, don't I tell you ladies, stop, stop, don't do that. We have men here, men that can do it, you know, and uh, you're supposed to take those things from those ladies and do it, your, do, let the men do it. Amen. If you see your lady taking out, if you saw Miriam take out trash right now, she's pregnant, you wouldn't let her take that trash. Give me that thing. I got it. And yeah, I don't feel like going to the trash can. I don't feel like going over there. But, but you go, you know, amen, thank you. But you go, amen, you go. I was telling my son uh, Angel today that they put boxes and they put them outside my trash can, you know, my family. So I, you got to get it down. You got to rip it all apart, you know, where it can fill in there because you can put three, four boxes in there and it's full. No, you got to show them, you know, this is how it's done. You know, and I tell my son, did you rip all those boxes up? No, I said, go over there and rip them up. You rip them in pieces and, and put it in there. That way, you know, not all filled up. We have to do that. Us men. I'm talking to men. Amen. And some of you men that are, you know, looking to, to be married or looking, you know, for, for a woman, they're not looking just for a good-looking guy. They're looking for a godly man. We're to be equally uh, yoked as Christians. We're not to marry people outside of the church of the world. If you get married to a worldly man or to a worldly woman, you're wrong. I'm telling you you're wrong. That's not Bible. We're to, you know, we're to marry Christians. You know, that's how we're to marry each other. Can I get an amen? amen. And if you, you guys got married before you were Christians, now you got to work it out. It's rough. It's rough. Amen. But you work, you work it out. Can I get an amen? amen. You know? You got married out there when you were in the world and all that stuff, and now you're learning to be a Christian. This is what this is. This is a disciple class, discipleship. We have, we have a woman's going on Wednesday, right? This one going on Thursday. Then we're going to be doing the men's, I mean, uh, a new uh, believers class uh, starting in November for, ja uh, for Sunday. It's going to be at 830 in the morning from 830 to 930 or 920 at, at, uh, you know, at the latest but we're going to teach uh, first-time uh, believers or people that no, don't have the foundations of why they got saved. What it is now that I'm saved. Now what happens? You know, you have to be baptized. And that's why we're having baptisms this Saturday coming up. It ain't just to have barbecue and all that. That's fun. That's great. I, I love that. I'm for all that. But the most important thing is baptism, that these people are giving their lives to Christ, and they're saying it out loud that, you know what, I'm dying to myself. I'm going under the water like Jesus Christ went into the grave. I'm going into the water, and I'm being buried. And when I come out, I'm coming out brand new like Christ did. And now I'm going to live a new life. This is what you're telling them when you're being baptized. I gave up my old life now. I'm living a whole new life. And we have to do this as believers. This is part of being a disciple this is being part of a christian and we have to we have to learn this and that's what we're doing we're teaching you guys discipleship one who is disciplined in the things of god and the truth of god that's what we're doing here we're teaching the word can i get an amen, amen. so go to first thessalonians chapter four and this is the apostle paul And, he's, and he's, he's pleading with them to, to keep themselves pure, to live a, a, a pure life. 
Not a perfect life. But live a life that is uh, sanctified. A life that is holy. A life that is uh, separate, separate from the world. We don't want to live like, like the world and, and, and uh, be mixed up with the world. I hope you don't. All of you should have said amen right there when, when I said, you know, you don't want to be like the world. Amen. You guys don't want to be like the world. Amen. amen. We should all be saying amen. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'm an amen. amen. I love to say amen. You know, I'll say amen because I agree with the word. Even if I don't live that way, I could be missing it. But if pastor's saying it or the speaker's speaking some truth, Amen. Amen. And they'll say, oh, brother, I thought you were uh, you're having a hard time in your marriage. I am. But he's telling me the truth. And I'm saying it's still an amen. amen. No matter what I'm going through. And that's what we have to learn. You could be sad. You could be broken. You can still say amen. That's how I was taught by Chapel Ray. I was taught that because I was broken hearted and I was all messed up when I came to Christ. And he says, brother, you came with some fire. The first six, eight months you was on fire. What happened? And I told him, and he says, there's still an amen in you, brother. Say amen, even if you ain't feeling it. As long as you agree with the words, give me an amen, brother. And I did. And when you agree with the word, that's power. That means you're agreeing with Jesus Christ. You agree with what he says. A la palabra de Dios. Amen. And we got to know that. It isn't about how I live and, you know. But the word will begin to change you. And that's what he's talking about. Being pure before God. And that's what I'm trying to teach Turning Point Fellowship. That we learn to be holy lives. That we're not like the world. There's a lot of big churches that you live with the way you want, any way you want to live and how you live. You know, you watch them on, uh, on things. You guys send me uh, 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 those little, what do they call those little things that you can hit and watch a video? What do they call it? Okay, I'm going to call it short. No, it says what it is, and then you hit the video and boom, it comes on, right? And you guys are telling me stuff, and you're like, well, I'm your pastor. I said, are, and I think, are you living this? Why are you showing me this? Am I missing it? Am I sinning? Am I wrong? Are you living this life? You know, because I go, you, on, on uh, uh, the, the videos, they got smoke going on. They got lights on. They got girls with short, tight pants on, stilettos on, and praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. You know, I think that's why you guys go there and like that stuff. A lot of people. It's showing uh, churches, oh, my God, they're freaking on the, on the, on the stage, on the altar, Doing all that stuff. Whirly dancing. Whirly dancing. It ain't nothing unto the Lord. They're showing their bodies off. And you know, the place is full. Yeah, it would be full too. I was said, oh, Pastor, got about three, four, five girls up there, man. Come check it out. You know? No, it ain't like that. We worship from our heart, not from our hips. Can I get an amen? We make great mistakes when we try to live too close to the world and still be Christians. Too many of us try to do this. We try to get close to the line. I told you about my friend that smoked, right? That they, told, they put some new rules in where I used to work at, and they had a line that because you, you smoke, you can't pass this line because the smoke is coming into the warehouse and into the counter area, and it smells like cigarettes. So they said, don't pass this line. And guess what the smokers would do? <laughs> They'd be right outside the other. A foot, this is the line. They'd be right here. And it would be coming right here. And I'm like, what the heck? I could, you should have put the line over there, 10 feet away, not right at the edge of the warehouse, you know. And my boss, yeah, you're right. Because you know, it gives you a headache, you know, for us who don't smoke. All right? So we're not to be like the world. And sometimes people want guidelines of what is right and what is wrong or what is sinful and what is not. So why? Because they can live on that edge. 
We're not to do that. We're to live our lives according to the word of God, according to the will of God. That's how we're to live our lives. And, and, and I know that the word cuts. I know it does. I know the word challenges our minds and our emotions and our thoughts. It should. It should. It really should. I watched that movie, what's it called, Flower, Moonflower, that Indian movie that came out, just came out three and a half hours, movie, what's it called, Flower, Moonflower, some Moonflower. I was teed off. That movie got me upset. It was a good movie because their, their character, they're living the character right there in front of you. I was, whoo, I wanted to say stuff out loud like I used to. I wanted to say, oh, my God, I wanted to say some stuff. But I didn't. But if you see that movie, I was challenged by it. I was challenged by some characters. They were playing certain characters in the movie. And I'm like, man, that's why I don't like that guy. That's why I don't like you now. You know, but he's just playing a character. And the word of God is, is, is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. That it cuts going in and it cuts coming out. And sometimes we get disturbed at it. We get bothered by the word of God instead of saying, Father, you're speaking to me. Thank you, Father. Amen. Search me out, Lord God. We, we already went through those scriptures, right? Search me out, Lord. And whatever is not pleasing to you, oh, Father, change it. No. Change me. Change me, Lord. Help me how to walk upright before you. That's what we should be asking what I don't, what, what doesn't please you, Father, teach me how to be pleasing unto you. And repent for whatever you have, whatever you have, unforgiveness, gossip. Some of you, right, right here, some of you guys are, are gossiping against each other in the church. I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't, don't tell me that pastor don't know. I know, I know who it is. I could call you out right now. I could call you out. But I won't. You guys are gossiping about your own brother, your own sister. In the church, hi, brother, sister, hypocrite, You're, you know, I'm being honest. We, this is the only way we're going to get healed when we, we face our problems, our troubles, our shortcomings. You, sorry about this, Pr Priscilla, you know, but you know me, you know, Pastor, amen. <laughs> you read this word, I read this word, I'm getting cut up. I'm asking for forgiveness. When I'm studying this word out, Father, forgive me. I've sinned. I've come short. And I'm not talking about a physical sinner. Sometimes it's your mind. Your heart's not right. And he's been dealing with my heart and dealing with my heart, and I'm still getting dealt with. And I'm like, this should have already been dealt with. God will tell you. We already should have went through all this. And some of us brothers and sisters, we should have already been past all this stuff. Been sitting here for Probably sat at one church for five, six years, and now you've been here for three years, and you still haven't changed. You brought all that luggage from out there. You brought it here to this church, and now you want to blame pastor and the elders here. And Oh, yeah, over there at the church, that's the way they do things. No, no, this is the way you do things, because I'm giving you the word, and we're going to give you the word. Can I get an amen? amen. It's, it's challenging. Can I use you, Mija? Challenging it's been through, huh? Talk to her. I talked to her. She, she expressed herself to me, you know, her heart, her emotions. And I said, ooh, ooh she's hurting. But she's, look at, but she's still here. She's still fighting. Still going forward. That's what it's all about. Amen. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down again, but we get back up. We dust ourselves off and we get back up. Stuff happens. My, my brother just died what, five months ago, seven months ago. My father just died about a month ago. My best friend just died about ten days ago. My best friend, a brother. Sometimes there's friends that are closer than brothers. I'm not saying that in my case because my brothers are close to me. But I was real close to this brother like a brother. We called each other brother. And I still call him. He's my brother. Known him since I was 15 years old. He's 64. I'm 63. We've known each other ever since those times. And he's a good brother. My heart's heavy. 
sit there and I think about him. Said Tito. And you get, I get upset with him because he could have took care of himself. Like all of us, right? We could do better, right? Taking care of ourselves. Our minds, our emotions, our food, our bodies. We can make better choices, right? Temptation comes. We have to make a choice. Amen? How do you change? Just fought, you fought temptation away, right? You had to fight. Temptation came, you know? And it's still coming, right? They gave me a donut Sunday. I want to eat that whole donut. I took a piece of it. I, I'm being honest with you. They were there. I took a piece of it. I said, here, you can have the rest of it, three quarters of it. I just took a bite and drank some coffee, and that was it. Yeah, exactly. Got a little taste of it. Amen? And we have to learn. We have to learn in Jesus' name. Can I get it? Amen? amen? So we have to follow the word of God, not uh, guidelines. Amen? amen. And uh, walking with God isn't uh, the issue of trying to walk a fine line between right or wrong. The real, the real issue is doing my life to please God. That's what we have to do. Our lives have to please God. And when we please God, we'll please man. You don't have to try to perform. It's hard when you're trying to perform to be somebody you're not. But when you're pleasing God, even in your wrongs and your shortcomings, Father, my heart is towards you. You're going to get better. And God's going to give you the comfort and strength to do that. I know people who drink in this church. I know people who get high in this church. I know them. But I'm not going to put nothing on them. I just believe that when they're around us, that the purity of God, the goodness of God, the witness of God is going to convict them. We don't have to tell them nothing. I hug these brothers like if I hugged you guys. I speak to them like if I was speaking to you guys. They're no different. I just keep telling them to keep going. Don't get, don't get caught up in that little stuff. Just keep moving forward in Jesus' name. And it doesn't have to be substance, people. Sometimes it's our emotions that get in the way, that trip us up. You know, some of you ladies are very strong, very strong, willful ladies. Well, I guess there's none. Speaking to people on, on Facebook, you know. Husbands, let your wife say yes. They can say yes. They can say amen. You know, they're strong. They're strong. But they're there to help you, to make you stronger. Some of you men need a strong woman because if you would have had a, a weak woman like you had probably before, something like that, that's why you walked all over her. But now that you have a strong woman, help, help him. To become strong. Don't put him down. Don't belittle him. Help him become the man you want him to become. Encourage him. Amen? That, that's how we're to work with one another. Don't make him like you either because you ain't going to like it because a lot of us don't like ourselves. Amen? And then when you see your twin, you're like, oh, my God, just like me. You know, you don't like it. Can I get an amen? Some of you have daughters and sons that are just like you. Can I get an Amen? I raise my hand, and I can't get upset. We have, to, we have to grow through all that stuff. So here's Paul, and he's pleading for purity. Finally then, brothers, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more, that you should grow more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. This is how we're to do. We're to walk as Christ. We're to please God. Amen. As believers. Paul taught them this. Pastor has taught you this. Some of you guys act like you don't even know me. You live a certain different life. I'm like, wow, is that the way Christ, uh, Turning Point lives? I'm sarcastic sometimes. And I say, oh, that's a good Christian. When I see you guys blow it in front of me, oh, that's a great Christian. There you go. That's a good Christian. No, we're not to do that stuff. Amen? I try to make it fun for you guys. But I am being honest. 
He says, ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. You guys know what God has given you through this pastor right here and through the leaders here. Amen? For this is the will of God. Now he's telling, you don't have to guess what is the will of God. I'm praying. I'm praying for the will of God. Here it is. He's telling you what the will of God is. It's not mysterious no more. He's opened it up through the power of the Holy Spirit. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel, your own body. You should know how to live. And sanctification and, hour, and, and, uh, and honor, excuse me, not in passion of the lust, like the Gentiles, like those that are outside the church who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. But because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forward you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man. But God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. So when you, when you reject pastor's instructions, I talk to you guys, and some of you guys just straight out tell me, no, I ain't doing it. I'm not going to do that. No, a lot of you guys. You guys don't say it with your mouth, but you say it with your words. How do they vote, Pastor Joe? Huh? Tell me, how do they vote? With their feet, right? Yeah, with your feet. That's how you vote. So we have to learn to live according to the word of God. And I, I, I found this, and I want to read this to you guys, if you guys don't mind. I'm going to take a little rabbit trail. But it, it's, it's, it's on sanctification. All right, guys? Sanctification is God's will for us. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.3. If you guys want to circle that, question marks on it and whatever. The word sanctification is related to the word saint. Both words have to do with holiness. To sanctify something that has set it apart for a special use. To sanctify a person is to make him holy. When you get saved, God has chosen you and he sanctified you by his spirit to set you apart from the world, not to be like the world. Too many Christians, they don't, people don't even know if you're a Christian. They should know by your lifestyle. They should begin to recognize, unless you're young in the Lord, I say a year younger, okay, and you sat under the word already, you, you begin to learn how to speak. I, I can't cuss. I remember when, uh, with, you know, your, one of your, par your partner, right? Your, the, you would say, hey, you can't speak like that in front of pastor. Because he was new. He didn't know. So he was dropping the F-bomb and all this and that all the time, you know? <laughs> she would say, don't do that. So we have to learn. We have to learn how to speak. And it's not just cussing. Sometimes it's dishonor. Sometimes it's disrespectful. How we act and how we speak. We have to be honorable people. We have to be holy. We have to be, be people that are sanctified. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus had a lot to say about sanctification in John 17. In verse 16, the Lord says, they are, not, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. And this is before his request. Sanctify them by the truth. How does he set us apart? By the truth. The truth of his word. And that's what pastor's doing. I'm teaching you guys the truth to set you apart from everybody else in the world, from your coworkers, that you're different from them, and they know it. Not because we throw a little amens and hallelujahs and shanechabor here and there. No, they know you by your lifestyle. They know how you carry, uh, carry yourself and you conduct yourself and your, your lifestyle is 
Christianity. Can I get an amen? So he says, sanctify them by the truth, and your word is truth. In Christian theology, sanctification is a state of separation unto God. All believers enter into this state when they are born of God, when you're born again, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He, he has set you apart. You are in Christ Jesus, who, become, who, who, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That's 1 Corinthians 1.30, if you're taking notes. 1 Corinthians 1.30. This is a good time to uh, study this word. It's a word study right now, sanctification. I'm giving you the scriptures that you can go back and do your homework. For when you're sitting there, I'm, a, I'm, I'm bored. No, it's time to do some homework. You had a lot of homework to get to where you're at right now today, right, Mia? Took you like a year or a little to get what you wanted. How many? 15 months. Sacrifice, right? Your husband had to sacrifice. The babies had to sacrifice, right? To be separated from their, from their mom. Sanctification. That's in business. But there's sanctification here spiritually. The sanctification mentioned in this verse is a once forever separation of believers unto God. When you receive God, he begins, he separated you now. And that's why there's conviction. Because you no longer belong to the world. You belong to God now, to his kingdom. So that's why we get convicted. He doesn't condemn you. The devil condemns. Man condemns. God convicts. And he convicts us in love. With a pure love. It's so beautiful. It's so, so pure that when you do wrong, you lie, you cheat, whatever you do, conviction comes to you. Why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. And he'll tell you, you're about to lie right now. Because you're trying to impress somebody or make yourself something bigger than you are. And the Holy Ghost will say, don't say that. Please don't say that. And we still do it. And then we get in the car, we get, we're right at our desk and like, why did I say that? I'm raising my hand. I've done that. Why did I speak foolishly? I was, there was no point. There was no point in saying that. What did I win? Nothing. No one raised my hand. No one gave me a trophy. Sometimes it's like we want that. No. We want to please God. Amen? Amen. It is a work God performs. It's an integral part of our salvation. It's our connection with Christ, Hebrews 10.10. 10. Theologians sometimes refer to this state of holiness before God as position, uh, positional, sanctification. It is related to justification. These all go together, holiness, sanctification, and justification. These are synonyms for each other, uh, words that are cousins, that are related to each other. Can I get an amen? And when we are positioning, uh, when we are positionally holy, set free from every sin by the blood of Christ, Acts 13, 39, we know that we're, that we, we know that we still sin, 1 John 1.10, 1 John 1.10. That's why the Bible also refers to sanctification as a practical experience of our separation unto God. Our lives should be an example. Our lives should be a witness that we've been set apart. You may be in your first two, ten steps of your walk, but you're separated from where you used to be now. Amen. You're a new person now. And people try to bring you back by your past to grow you back in your neck. Like, oh, you got to remember all this, though. You remember what you said? You remember what you did? And I used to tell people this. No, I don't. I don't remember. I don't want to remember. And don't try to remind me of who I was. I have enough trouble already fighting that enemy by myself. 
And now you're there helping him out. Two against one. Let me live my life. And people tell me that. Oh, you don't remember this? I do not remember, and I do not want to remember. I'm living a new life now. Amen? This is how we're to live, a sanctified life. This is what Paul's talking about. The Bible also refers to sanctification as a practical experience of separation into God. Progressive, exper experimental, sacrifice, sacrificial, sanctification, as it is sometimes called, is the effect of obedience to the word of God in one's life. You're sanctified because of your obedience, because you're doing different from what you used to do. From what the world does, you do it different. You, you, you obey God and not the world. Can I, get an, can I get an amen? The word of God's one's uh, life, uh, here it is. It is the same as growing in the Lord, 2 Peter 3.18. 2 Peter 3.18. Or spiritually maturity. God started to work. God started the work of uh, of making us like Christ. And he is continually doing it. Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. God has started this work. He's going to finish it. But it's a continued work. It's not quitting in the middle of the race. Because it gets tough or because you blow it or, you know, you went and got high. You went over, you cussed your wife or you, 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 you know, you slapped your husband. It doesn't stop. You ask for forgiveness. Thank you, sir. You ask for forgiveness and you keep going. And sometimes you got to learn to just be quiet. I've said that many times to couples here. It's just your turn to be quiet now. And the people that I know and I'm confident with, it's, callate ya. That means shut up now. That's a harsh word, I know, for Christians to hear that. But it's just time to be quiet now sometimes. You're not going to win. You're just going to make it worse. Can I get an amen? Because we keep opening our mouths and you're just making it more and more and more and more. Stop now. Just let me be quiet. Because I need to take my foot out of my mouth and it's hard because now I'm getting the other foot in there. You know? Can I get an amen? amen. I've been told that. Come on now. Get your foot out your mouth now. You got to do that. And it's hard. Especially to hear it from your you're a, a person you're married to, and they start telling you the truth. Mm, yep, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Amen. We don't. It's a trip. But if, if we listen and we grow and we obey, we're going to get better. Amen. It's going to be better in Jesus' name. So the type of sanctification is to be uh, pursued by the believer earnestly, honestly, 1 Peter 1.15, if you're taking notes now. 1 Peter 1.15, Hebrews 12.14. Hebrews 12.14. So I'm going to read it again. This type of sanctification is to be pursued by believers earnestly and is effected by the application of the word. Amen. This is how we get affected. This is how we, we are infected by the word of God. When we participate with the word of God, we can't just be hearers. We have to be what? Doers. We can talk a good word, but if you're not doing it, you know in your heart you're not living that word. There's some sharpening that has to take place. A little polishing has it. Don't beat yourself up and kill yourself spiritually. I need some polishing. And if you got to go home and apologize to somebody or pray before, do that. You got to go home and check yourself, you know. How many times do you have to uh, apologize to your grandson, right? Even if it's not even their fault. I mean, your fault. You still done it because you'd rather have peace than argument, right? And that's what a mature Christian does. Thank you. A mature Christian says, I apologize. But Miriam, if you would have just 
listen to me and just been quiet, everything would have worked out. But now I have to say I'm sorry. No, that ain't the way we do it. I can say that to you guys. I, I have confidence in you guys. You guys aren't going to get offended and leave my church. You know what I mean? That uh, we should be able to do this to each other. You know, hey, my fault. You didn't do nothing wrong. It was me. It takes a humility. Can I get an amen? That takes humility. That takes strength. Weak people don't apologize. Weak people do not apologize. Strong people ap apologize. So if you ain't apologize, you're weak. Yeah, pastor said it. I know, I know. There goes pastor again. There he goes, taking off on me. Progressive sanctification has in view the sitting, the sitting apart of believers for the purpose for which they are sent into the world. Our sanctification. As you sent me in the world, this is Jesus. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I have sanctified myself that they too may be truly sanctified. It's our actions. It's our lifestyle. The way we're living that God begins to separate you and he begins to uh, make you holy through some actions you blew. It ain't to point fingers at, you know, Ooh, I need some work. I need some work. Lord, work on me. I need to show that I'm holy unto you, Lord God. I want to show that my life has changed. I talk to people here. I talk to people and I tell them, I said, you see this woman right here? She is the uh, 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 product of your faith. She's the product of your actions. She's the product of your attitude. And you wonder why she's like that? Because she's the product of who you are and vice versa women too. Your daughters, your sons. That little girl was 10 years old. Imagine her mom. Her mom must be a prayer warrior, right? That little girl was preaching up a storm. I, I, how old do you, I said 10 years old, because she's, you know, most Latinas, little chaparras, but she had, she had it going on. If you guys see that video, she was, did you see, guys see it? Powerful, powerful. She was moving, boy. So she's the prodigal, she's the uh, product, product of her mother or, or whoever raised her in the, in the gospel, and that's what we have to do now. We have to do that. I see my son. He's coming back. He has questions. He says, it's hard to be a good person, Dad. I said, yes, it is. After you've been a jerk, after you've been a butt, you know, excuse me, I wasn't behind the pulpit. Because pastor was that. My son was just like I was when I was out there. But now he's going to become like, Pastor in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what I'm believing for. And I'm nobody. I'm nobody. Don't look at me like I'm nobody. or I mean, uh, like I'm somebody. I'm not. Not in before God. That's what I do with you. 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 I do that with you, you ladies. The ones that are close to me. I don't let them get away with stuff either. Right, Sally? Pow. No, <laughs> amen. Verse 17, I mean, chapter 17, 18, and 19. Don't go there, just John, we're taking notes. John 17, verses 18 and 19. These you can go home. And, Jesus sent himself apart for God's purpose. Is both, uh, is both the basis and the condition of our being set apart. John 10, 36. John 10, 36. We have a purpose. To be set apart. It's not just to be set apart to be set apart. It's purpose in your life. Can I get an amen? amen? We are sanctified set because Jesus was set apart. We were sanctified just like him. And we've been sanctified just like him. Set apart. Our Lord's sanctification is the pattern of and power of our own. 
It's ours. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same spirit that, lived you, that lives inside of you now. Amen? This is how we live. This is how we're sanctified. It ain't by our eloquence. He says this in the first chapter, right? I didn't come with you with eloquent words and big words to make myself. No. He says, I came in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we're to come. That's what's happening here right now. There's an impartation taking place to you guys. We're going to begin to be separate now. Not from each other, but from the world. And we're going to begin to sharpen each other. We're going, to take, we're going to be accountable for each other, our words, our actions, our lifestyle. That's how it should be as a Christian. Right. Hallelujah. Where was I? Thank you, Father. Hebrews? Oh, okay, thank you. We are sanctified and set because Jesus was. Our Lord's sanctification is the pattern of power for our own. The sending and the sanctification are in, uh, separ separable. Uh, inseparable. Separable. Thank you. On the, this act, we are called saints or sanctified ones. Can I get an Amen. Prior to salvation, our behavior uh, uh, bore witnesses of our standing in the world and separation from God, right? But now our behavior should, be, uh, should bear witness of our standing before God and separation from the world. Like I said earlier, that sometimes with a Christian, you can't tell if he's saved or not. They should know us by our fruit. They should know us how we live. Not because we pray for our food in front of everybody. Because sometimes you can just say, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And that suffice. As long as it's from the heart. Amen? And I'm not trying to give you guys a shortcut. Because I know some of you guys say, well, Pastor said. You pray the way you pray for your food and whatever you got coming to you. Amen? So it says, uh, 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 prior to salvation, our behavior bore witnesses uh, to, our out, to our standing in the world in separation from God. But now our behavior should bear witness to our standing before God in separation from the world. Little by little, every day, those who are being sanctified are becoming more like Christ. Amen? Amen? Give me about three more minutes, mijo. That's Hebrews 10, 14. There is a third sense in which the world sanctification is used in Scripture, a complete, an ultimate sanctification. This is the same as glorification. Paul prays in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our goal. Paul speaks of Christ as the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27, Colossians 1.27, and leaks the glorious appearing of Christ to our personal glorification. That's the ultimate at the end, that we've been glorified with God. We've been resurrected by the power of God, and now you receive the glory. He is the glory. Amen. Jesus Christ is our glory. Can I get an amen, church? The, the glorified state will be our ultimate separation from sin. When we get there, we're not going to be dealing with sin no more. A total set of, uh, sanctification in every regard. We know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For he shall see, we shall see him as he is, 1 John 3, 2. That's the, four, first gen, uh, the separation, the ultimate separation. That when we see him face to face, we're not going to ask questions. What happened to the people here and what happened to the children there? And all? You're going to bow and fall on your face, I believe. This is the glory of God. Amen. To summarize, sanctification 
is a translation of the Greek word uh, hagiomos. I'm going to spell it H-A-G-I-A-S-M-O-S. One more time. H-A-G-I-A-S-M-O-S, meaning holiness, separation. In the past, God granted us justification as once for all positional holy in Christ. In this presence, God guides us to maturity, a practical, progressive holiness. This is how we know if we're holy, as we mature in the things of God. We can be in church 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It can still be immature. doesn't mean you're a mature Christian because you have a lot of scripture and you can declare uh, scripture. doesn't mean that you live that. You guys heard me, right, with the memes and all that? I hope you're living all that. You're writing a lot of stuff. I hope you mean that because you got to check yourself. Don't try to put all that stuff up there to make yourself look good. Make sure you're living it. Amen? When you guys write stuff, it's very fair, very few in between that I, 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 I uh, respond. Because you guys just talking to me some, you know, so you're just talking. But you, if you get something out of me, I was like, hmm, they, they did good right there. That was good. That was a good one. Can I get an Amen. So God will give us clarif- uh, uh, glorification, a permanent, ultimate holiness. These three phases of sanctification separate, uh, separates the believer from the penalty of sin. Justification, the power of sin, maturity. It, you separate it from the power of sin. That Sin no longer has a hold of you. You can overcome it. As you grow, you begin to go overgrow. All of us had trouble with cigarettes and, and, and pot and things like that with our mouth, our anger. Some of us ain't dealing with that stuff no more. Amen? Because we're maturing. We're growing. Amen? We ain't got to lie to kick it no more. Can I get an amen? That's a beautiful thing when you ain't got to lie to kick it no more. I can tell the truth and still going to love me. Can I get an amen? You guys still love me? Jeremy, you love me? Yeah, man, I love you too, my brother. I know he does. These three phrases, sanctification, separate the believer from the penalty of sin, justification, the power of sin, maturity, and the presence of sin, and from sin, glorification, sanctification. The young lady that called me yesterday, that's what we went through. I went through all that, and I went through three, three chapters with her. Three, four, and five. I was on the phone with her for like an hour, 40 minutes, hour and 45 minutes. And she goes, I'm getting it. I'm understanding. And instead of just talking about each other, let's talk about the word. When I say we go eat after church, let's fellowship. Yeah, we're going to have fun and we're going to joke around all that. There's nothing wrong with that. But we, we should have something to speak about when we're at lunch. Like, Hey, you know what? Pastor said this, or he uh, quoted this scripture. What do you think about this scripture right here? What are your thoughts? Excuse me, on that. Amen? Amen. This is how our fellowship should be with one another. Steph, I should be sharpening you, and you should be sharpening me. Iron sharpening iron. I talked to Steve Pitt, right? Full of, full of the word, just full of the word. I'm like, ooh, wait. You know, what's coming to me was, this is competition right here. I know we're not about competition. I said, but this brother is throwing the palabra. He's boom, boom. I, you know, he, he lives by himself, his family. But he goes, I'm in my word every day, Pastor. Every day I'm just. And I said, come on, brother. And we're just going back and forth. And he's like, whoo. He goes, I can feel your, your sword. Cling, 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 cling. I said, amen. Iron sharpening iron, baby. And we were there like for 40 minutes. I had to stop because I had like about four or five more calls to make. You know, I said, whew. I said, this was good, my brother. Thank you for the blessing. Started crying when I prayed for him. Started crying, you know. I was grateful for his heart, for the hunger that he has for the word of God and the word that he has in him. He's not a pastor. He has no position, no nothing. 
His position is in Christ. He's not trying to show off or nothing like that. Because when he, he sends me a scripture every single day, and it's always sharpening. I tell him, I said, oh, brother, that, I needed that one. I said, that one was right on time. I will tell him that. I said, that was right on time, my brother. I needed that. Thank you. He says, anytime, Pastor Lord, I love you. I love you too, my brother. He's probably listening to us right now. I know he is. He listens. There's people that watch us. He lives in Texas. That's why he can't be here. And he's a single man. You ladies missed out. <laughs> good looking man, too. Yeah, good. And he's a good brother. He loves the Lord. Yoked up and everything. But he's very humble. When you, when you talk to him, very, very humble cat. Very humble cat. Beautiful people. You know, and when I say to you people, you're beautiful, don't, don't, pastor's trying to flirt with me. No, no. I'm looking at the inside. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful people. You're beautiful people. Value yourself. You're beautiful. Amen? You know that. Can I get an amen? Let's all stand to our feet in Jesus' name. I went a little bit over, but I wanted to finish that. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Bless the Lord. Father, we bless you and we thank you for your word. We thank you that we are represented by you and we're represented in you, Father. And we thank you that we represent one another as witnesses, Father. Witnesses of your love, of your sanctification, glorification, justification, Lord. We've been justified, we've been glorified, and we'll reach the ultimate glorification when we see you face to face. But right now, Father, we know it's a, it's a work. It's a sanctification. It's a practical living under the word of God to please you and to honor you. Not man, Father, not a woman, Lord God, but to please you with our minds, with our words, with our thoughts, our emotions, Father, that we won't let that get the best of us because we know that you're working in us and we want to be better. We want to be just like Jesus. That's our goal, to be a witness, to be an example of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for every one of these disciples that are sitting here under the word of God, that as they receive the discipleship of Jesus Christ through the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blessings upon their lives. I thank you for saving their lives. I thank you that, Father, they can raise their hands and say, I am a Christian. I am a believer. I am. No matter what I've said, no matter what I've done, I've asked God for forgiveness, and I'm forgiven, and I am free to bless the Lord and honor the Lord. So, Father, I thank you for our children that are next door, our grandchildren, the youth that are next door. I thank you for their lives, their salvations, Father. Divine protection from the wicked and unreasonable person, Lord. That angels are camped about them wherever they may be. They may be grown-ups, 40, 50-year-old grown-ups, 30, 25-year-old grown-ups. Father, we're still asking for divine protection over our children, Lord. Protect them, even from themselves, Lord God. We thank you for your word that is alive. Your word is spirit and your word is true. And it has ministered to us today. The seed of life has been dropped in good ground, our hearts. And we're believing for a harvest of good fruit, Lord, of love, faith, hope, persevering, patience, gentleness, meekness, Lord, joy and laughter. That's the fruit we're looking for, Lord, to be evident in our lives. Thank you for the healing of our minds, of our souls, of our bodies. We receive our healing right now by faith. We raise our hands, Lord God, and say thank you for our healing, for our sound mind. Thank you for overcoming 
by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we overcome. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise offering. Shake somebody's hand. Hug somebody. Thank you for uh, showing up there, Facebook, YouTube. Thank you for being part of it. Hope to see you one day out here, uh, a Thursday or a Sunday or a Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have prayer now. So come on out, be part of it this, uh, thir uh, this Sunday. We have church, 10 o'clock. So come on out. Hallelujah.